On today's Maker Mashup, we're introducing the X201. So today we're introducing the X201, which is the baby brother of the X301. It's our Core XY 3D printer. And there is a link at the top here in the card and you can see the entire build series if you're not familiar with it. If you are, you know that the X301 is becoming an increasingly popular printer among a lot of different makers for a lot of different reasons. First of which is it's a Core XY printer. It's a very compact space and it works really well. And it really packs a lot of punch as far as different features. So today what we're gonna do is talk about the X201. Now this is a smaller version of it and you may immediately ask why would we want a smaller one? Well, as you can see, this printer has got a very small footprint. In fact, it's a smaller footprint than the Ender 3. So it's perfect if you want to put it in your office. And a matter of fact, that was one of my driving reasons is down here in the shop, I love having the 301, but it's way too big for my office and to have that in there where I can print little parts and test things. That's where this printer really comes in. It's identical in most of its construction to the X301. So I know that the prints, and I'll show you here, the prints that come off of it identical to what you could expect on the 301. So let's talk about the changes of this printer versus the 301. So first off, it is smaller. We are using here basically the same size plate as an Ender 3. Uh, we're getting right now 217 by 217 millimeters of build space. Now that is three millimeters shorter than the Ender 3. And what we're going to be releasing here in just about a week or so is an upgrade to the carriage for not only the X201, but for the 301 as well, that gains an extra three millimeters of space. Now we didn't do it really to compete with the Ender 3. It is nice that they both will have uh, the same build area, but the real difference here is that with that little bit of space, uh, we're able to expand the build surface on all of the different uh, 3D printers. And the X501 is going to be the next printer that we're gonna be assembling here. And I'll talk about a little bit about that later. I know a lot of people have been excited to hear about that printer. Uh, but let's continue talking about the X201. So we're changing the carriage. That's gonna give us about three more millimeters of space. And then we'll have a full 220 uh, build area on the plate. As far as the Z-axis, it is a little bit shorter than the Ender 3. Uh, the Ender 3 will do about 250. This one will do 230. Uh, the nozzle is a standard V6. You can use a Volcano, but I wanted to go ahead and use the standard V6 for this one, giving it smaller area. Didn't really see the need for the Volcano. Uh, still a good option though, if you wanna go that route. Uh, we did improve the fan duct a little bit. So the non-Volcano nozzle, uh, the fan duct in the rear here is a little bit improved. So we've made some enhancements there. Uh, as we talked about, that carriage is going to be upgraded here in the coming days. Other changes that we made, very slight. The end stop here, the mechanical end stop, if you choose to have a mechanical end stop on your build, that is a little bit thinner. Now that was just to accommodate the extra lift that you're going to get by having to come up a little bit further with the non-volcano nozzle. Now the rear of the printer changed just a little bit, but ever so slightly. Uh, the power panel needed to be shifted over just a little bit and the fan grate, it's now just one fan grate given the uh, smaller footprint size. And the USB panel is pretty much the same as it was before. So other than that, really, all of the models from the X301 really convert back to this X201 size. Now, what's really great about that is that the X301 and the X201 really have become a scalable printer. Now, of course, there are other printers on the market that you can go ahead and easily uh, use a configurator or calculator spreadsheet uh, to generate larger or smaller builds. But the really nice thing about the X201 is that it really offers you the ability to use commodity parts. So the extrusion lengths uh, for the base, for the top, they're 300 millimeter. They're not uh, an odd size of like 325 or 
318, some odd number. They're really standard sizes, so you can even buy these parts on Amazon.com if you wanted to go down that route. Now, we're going to have a build kits uh, starting to become available for these along with the other kits on LayerFuse.com, but overall, uh, we source the extrusion from Masumi again. Very straightforward stuff. Uh, the linear rails obviously are 300 millimeters long instead of 400 millimeters long. Really quick, easy changes uh, that made this very easy to put a smaller version together. So now let's take a look at the inside here and the changes that took place inside. Now, as you can see here, this is a very tight area to work with. Uh, there was not nearly as much room in the enclosure. However, some key differences that are on the inside of the X201 uh, in contrast with the X301. First, obviously there's only one power supply. We have a much smaller bed, really no reason to have a second power supply in there. Uh, the other thing that has been removed inside of here is the MOSFET. Now you certainly could still squeeze a MOSFET in here if you wanted one. Uh, but again, it's a much smaller bed and the SKR is quite uh, capable of powering this Ender 3 bed that's on here. Inside here, uh, there's a 360 watt power supply. Um, we have the SKR and then also inside here, uh, right from the start, I put the fan board in here. Uh, so it is completely silent lit. And matter of fact, the printer's on right now. Uh, so one of the really nice features is that silent uh, fans that are in everything in here. So the power supply is silent and uh, all the fans that are inside. Now I did add additional cooling fans in here. Uh, once the cover goes on, there's actually two 60 millimeter muffin fans in here. And those muffin fans are blowing the air out of the case. And then on the front here, we'll have some uh, air entryway in the cover that will basically cause that uh, air to flow and kind of suck out from the front to the back. Now you'll also notice here that the front panel's a little bit different. Now on the front panel, it's pretty much the same one. We updated it a little bit. Uh, what I did was uh, one of the tricks that uh, one of our uh, people in our Discord had done, which I thought was brilliant. Uh, I think I saw Buddy do it first. Uh, he just did a filament change midway through the printing process of the front panel and was able to get the white background uh, onto there. I think he had done that with his. So shout out to him for uh, going ahead and do that. And then the other part is we added the layer fuse logo to the front panel as well. I think it looks really nice. Uh, we also went ahead and uh, Nick and I agreed that this uh, Caribbean blue color is going to be the layer fuse blue color. Uh, so if you want to print one that kind of aligns with the brand, uh, you can always go with this blue color. But with this DIY build, it's like anything else. I have loved to seeing all the different colors that people have printed their printers in. Uh, there's really been some spectacular ones in the Discord. Uh, just so many people coming up with really creative builds for this. So let's talk about building it yourself. So there will be a bill of materials down in the description. I'm still wrapping that up. Uh, it'll be a couple of days before I finish that up uh, after the release of this video. I want to get the video out because a lot of people are interested about the printer. But bottom line is if you put together a 301 or you want to use the 301 as a roadmap, really all of the parts are already available out there. Now the repo will contain uh, a different set of files for uh, the 201 versus the 301 just to keep things straight. Uh, you'll obviously have the different changes for like the uh, end stop parts and then also some of the other parts on here that we talked about earlier. Okay, so I think that really covers a lot of the changes that took place with this printer. For the most part, it's a smaller version of the 301. So as promised, now that we're uh, done talking really about the X201, is I wanted to go ahead and announce that I am now in the process of building the X501. Now, this piece of metal right here, which eclipses this printer, and you could in fact enclose this printer inside uh, the soon to be X501 printer. A lot of people in the Discord calling it the printer that shall not be named, but I want to announce that I am going to be starting that build and uh, working towards that. Now, with the X201, it was so similar to the X301 that I really didn't think it was necessary 
to walk through step by step. If you want to know how to build this printer, you just have to watch the X201 series and buy the smaller parts. You end up with a 301. The X501, however, has a, a little bit more uh, engineering challenges, right? So you've got a much bigger printer. When you start talking about having something that large, uh, there's going to be some challenges. So uh, I think I have them all worked out. But what I want to do is in the next coming weeks, I'm going to be doing some smaller videos, really just giving progress updates and showing you uh, the process that of uh, building this printer out and getting that 501 in place. And I just, I love the size of that extrusion that's right there because it really, to me, says this is just gonna be an enormous printer and just so much fun to build. So let's talk about the 501 briefly because I, I wanna save that for those videos. But uh, essentially, we are talking a build area that will be roughly 500 millimeters by 500 millimeters. So we'll have a very, very large build surface. Uh, you could probably print small children on it. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, the, the build's going to be extremely large. As a matter of fact, uh, just looking at the size of this piece right here on my workbench, it is barely going to fit on this workbench. So what's going to be really interesting and what I may do as part of this build series is build a floor stand for this as well. So I'm going to go ahead and work on some of those videos and hopefully it'll be interesting to watch how this gets built and hopefully we can go ahead and put a uh, floor stand together with it as well because this is going to be just an absolutely enormous printer. So if you have suggestions or things that you've seen in the X301 or the X201 or soon to be X501, uh, leave them down in the comments. I would love to hear some of your feedback on uh, some of the things that you might like to see in that printer. So with that is going to bring the end of today's video. If you like today's video, mash that like button and don't forget to share and subscribe so you don't miss the videos on this really large printer. I'm really excited for it. So many people have built this printer now and it's a great resource and links for that are down in the Discord. And of course, I want to shout out the MVPs that are always there uh, helping people out, especially Buddy and Dano. You guys have been rock stars, really helping everybody out with their builds. Uh, Dano has built uh, a C201 uh, and he's built an X301 as well. So he's really, in matter of fact, he even built the Frankenstein printer. So he's really got a lot of experience and really helpful. And Buddy has done a lot of really great work. Uh, he's uh, managed to now get RepRap firmware uh, running on the X301. And uh, he's done a lot of work with bed leveling as well. So he's got a process for automatic bed leveling. And I'm hoping to adopt that here pretty soon to a video uh, showing off what uh, Buddy was able to uh, do for this printer. So very much looking forward to it. Check out the Discord. Definitely a great place to hang out uh, if you're a maker of any sort. So with all that said, I'm going to say thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.